Welcome to another episode of Software Explorations, Concepts and Overviews, hosted by yours truly, Tech Coach Ralph, where we are engineered to win. In today's episode, we are going to get into the compliance aspect of the GRC framework. Once again, GRC stands for Governance, Risk Management, and Compliance. Today, like I said, we're going to be talking about compliance. We're going to be digging deeper into it. The past couple of weeks, we went into risk management and into governance. So today, we're going to dedicate our video our stream to understanding what compliance is all right we're going to dig deep so let's go ahead and get started with our presentation all right so let's get into digging deeper into compliance in today's agenda we're going to talk about the definition of compliance the key elements of compliance the objective of compliance and the role that it plays in organizational success at the end of the day what really what it really boils down to is the success of our organization and that's what we're going to focus on all right, so what exactly is compliance? So let's take a quick look at this diagram. So all the things that come from compliance, right? Requirements, rules, standards, governance, regulations, transparency, policies, and law, right? So many different aspects of compliance that we're going to be looking into. So compliance refers to the adherence to relevant laws, regulations, industry standards, contractual obligations, and internal policies and procedures related to information security, right? So basically, we have to make sure all of our T's are crossed and all of our, uh, all of our I's are dotted to make sure that we're following the laws, the regulations, making sure we're keeping in line with industry standards and that all of our contractual obligations are being met because any of these things can cause catastrophic events to our, to our company, to our organization, right? So... Let's jump into the key elements of compliance. So there's the legal and regulatory um, component. There's the industry standards. There's the contractual obligations. There's the internal policies and procedures. There's risk-based compliance management. There's continuous monitoring and assurance, documentation and reporting, integration with governance, and risk management. So we're going to be looking deeper into each one of those, but I just wanted to lay it all out for you before we got into it. All right, so the, the legal and regulatory, right? It ensures that the organization complies with applicable. It ensures that the organization complies with ac applicable laws, regulations, and legal requirements related to information security and data protection. It also includes laws such as the General Data Protection Regulation (GDPR), the Health Insurance Portability Accountability Act (HIPAA). I'm sure many of us have heard of HIPAA before the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards, PCI DSS, and other industry-specific regulations. I remember I was working at one company where we were involved, like with, um, we had clients that were in the, um, in the healthcare department. Um, we had, uh, we had, um, we had clients who processed customers' credit card data. So we had to get um, our, our certifications, our compliance for all of these different sectors um, and then, like everyone in the company would have to go and do these um, these information security um, like courses, modules to make sure that we are all in line, all in check to being like PCI compliance, HIPAA compliance, GDPR compliance. Because we had like we had and we had um, companies that were from all over the world. So whatever, if there were regulations in Europe, we had to make sure we were keeping in line with those uh, European regulations as well. All right. So industry standards. Adhering to industry recognized standards, frameworks, and best practices for information security. It may include standards such as ISO IEC 27001, the NIST cybersecurity frameworks, CIS controls, and other rele relevant guidelines published by industry associations and regulatory bodies, right? So just depending on the in industry that you're in, you have to keep in line with those standards that everyone else is following because it can also make you look bad if you say, oh, I'm not going to follow that when everyone else is following it. Right? Contractual compliance. So fulfilling contractual obligations related to information security and data protection imposed by customers, partners, suppliers, and other third parties. It includes complying with contractual terms, service level agreements, SLAs, process, data processing agreements, DPAs, and other legal agreements that govern the handling of protection and protection of sensitive information. So when you get into these deals, you like you have you have a contract with your with your customers, uh, the the people that you partner up with, the people who supply you, and whatever other third party you're dealing with. 
everyone has a contract and you, you need to make sure at least on your end that you are keeping up with your end of the deal because if not, then you put yourself in breach of the contract and you are subject to lawsuits, which can be very, very expensive, right? Um, and just going to court itself is expensive. But then if you lose the case, then you, you're, you're even subject to more penalties. So, um, you know, and, and, those, and those contracts, right? So for instance, if you have a surface level agreement saying that you have 99.9% .9 uptime, if you have a major outage, that's going to cost you some money, right? If, if you mishandle the, the processing of, of, of client data, that's going to cost you some money. So be, making sure that the policies that you set in place is going to protect you when it comes to these contractual obligations. All right, so internal policies and procedures. Following internal policies, guidelines, and procedures established by the organization to govern its information security practices. It includes policies related to access control. We've spoken about access control in the identity and access management um, video that we had a few months ago. Data classification, encryption, incident response, and other aspects of information security management, right? So everything is coming full circle. And, and the internal processes and procedures they are based on all the other components of compliance and risk management and governance to make sure that the processes that we're having the company follow is to protect yourself, the company, your customers, your suppliers, all of that, right? Because a lot of times we, we, get, we get a bit frustrated and annoyed because, oh, we have to do this, we have to do that. This puts us at risk and things like that. However, we have to, we, we have to always remember that being in the best interest of ourselves, our company, our clients, right? And that's why we have these internal procedures and processes, these internal policies and, pro and procedures, All right? So risk-based compliance management, managing compliance requirements in a risk-based manner, prioritizing efforts based on the organization's risk profile, business objectives, and regulatory obligations. It involves conducting risk assessments, gap analysis, and compliance audits to identify areas of non-compliance and prioritize remediation, efforts accordingly right so it's always it's, it's pretty much managing your risk and making sure that we set these compliance principles in place so that we can make sure that we are at a low level of risk and that we don't have anything fall through the cracks and then we end up getting bit in the in the long run right so continuous monitoring and assurance continuously monitoring and assessing compliance with information security requirements to ensure that controls are effective very important that they're effective that the policies are followed and regulatory obligations are being met, right? So um, you can have effective policies, but if, if they're not being followed, then it doesn't really matter, right? And we want to make sure that the what we're following, that it's keeping us in line because, with the regulatory obligations. There are some times that you might have these policies in place, but then the regulatory obligations change and you're not aware of it, and then now you're out of compliance. So we have a team that is always, um, always keeping up to date to make sure that whatever the, the new things that are coming out, we are always in compliance. We're making the necessary adjustments, right? It includes conducting regular, regular compliance audits, reviews, and assessments to identify and address deficiencies and ensure ongoing adherence to compliance requirements. And just like I was mentioning, right, it, regularly um, with compliance audits to make sure that we're up to date and that anything that changes, we can quickly ramp up and make the necessary adjustments. Documentation and reporting. Maintaining documentation and records of compliance activities, including policies, procedures, assessments, audit records or audit reports and evidence of compliance efforts. This documentation helps demonstrate compliance to, regu to regulators, auditors, cu customers, and other stakeholders and supports accountability and transparency in compliance management, right? And here's the thing, like um, when I was working for a pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company, the FDA has like, um, and other governing bodies, they say, okay, you need to be able, you need to keep these records for this amount of time and, um, and, and, when we ask, you have to be able to report on this. We can, like, we can send uh, auditors and regulators um, whenever we feel like it to to make sure things are on the up and up. And that's why we would also have our like would hire auditors to make sure that we everything is in place, and we we'll go through these processes and procedures to make sure that that things are are clean and things are clear, so that if we do end up getting audited by like a, a governing body, that uh, we went through the process and we make sure that everything is in place. Uh, and and once when when we do have things that are not uh, that are out of place, we make sure that we get it cleaned up in case that we do get a, a real audit one day. So integration with governance and risk management, right? So it ensures that compliance and efforts are aligned with organizational objectives, 
risk priorities, and governance structures, facilitating a coordinated and holistic approach to managing information security risk. Right. So that one pretty much explains itself. That's why it's GRC, right? We we need to make sure that our compliance can easily and smoothly integrate with our governance and our risk management. So let's get into the objectives of compliance, right? So objectives are legal and regulatory requirements. So adherence to legal and regulatory requirements, right? Because you can have them, but the requirements, but if you don't adhere to them, then what's the point, right? Protection of stakeholder interests, mitigation of regulatory risks, promotion of ethical conduct, data protection and privacy, risk management and control effectiveness, corporate responsibility, facilitation of business operations, right? So we're going to quickly run through each one of these to get some insight on, and then we're going to wrap it up, okay? So legal and regulatory requirements. It aims to ensure that the organization complies with applicable laws and regulations governing its operations, including those related to information security, data protection, privacy, financial reporting, and specific regulations, right? It minimizes, very important, it minimizes the risk of legal penalties, fines, and sanctions while maintaining legal standing and credibility. And that's what it's all about, right? Because you can, like, there's so many different things that can happen, but once you get leveraged these legal penalties, these fines, these sanctions, um, then you can call it a wrap, right? So, uh, and, and they all work together. So, stakeholder interests, all right? So, with, with this one, it protects the interests of stakeholders, including customers, investors, employees, partners, and regulators by safeguarding their rights, privacy, and confidential information, right? And this is what, what I was touching on a little bit earlier. Your stakeholders are all these people, the customers, investors, employees, the partners, the regulators. Everyone is like, everyone is part of this ecosystem. And that's why compliance is so important because we need to protect the stakeholder interest. It ensures that sensitive data is handled and protected in accordance with legal and ethical standards, fostering trust and confidence among stakeholders, right? And here's a quick thing about ethical versus legal. Something can be legal and it's not ethical. And, um, and, and, that's, and that's bad too, right? Because it, it, like a lot of times it takes the law to, to catch up with morality, right? So, and, and the good thing about this, because like now you can have like a bad reputation, but with the stakeholder interest, like we want to make sure that we protect, uh, that we protect with legal and ethical standards, right? Not just one or the other. So regulatory risk aims to identify, assess, and mitigate regulatory risk associated with non-compliance with legal and regulatory requirements. It also minimizes the risk of regulatory investigations, enforcement actions, and reputational damage preserving their reputation and market credibility, right? It's, your reputation is, is, you are your reputation, right? So, um, and if you, if you destroy that, you have no credibility on the market. So let's keep that in mind when we're thinking about compliance. And next, ethical conduct. Fosters a culture of ethical conduct and integrity within the organization by promoting adherence to ethical standards, values, and, and principles. Reinforces the importance of honesty, honesty, transparency, fairness, and accountability in all business activities, strengthening corporate governance and organizational culture. Next, data protection and privacy. It implements the appropriate measures to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of sensitive information, including personal data, financial records, and proprietary information, right? If anybody saw the movie, um, what's the name of that movie? Um, Fun with Jack and Jill, I think? Uh, it was Jim Carrey and, and, and his wife. I forgot, I forgot the, the, the name of, of the actress. But, um, and, and it, like, Jim Carrey was like working at some stock company, something like that. And then they were like, they were burning all type, and trading all type of files and stuff like that. Uh, destroying sensitive information, so uh, so so this is what the data protection and privacy is, and and making sure that the company has everything on the up and up, right? Helps mitigate the risk of data breaches, identity theft, and privacy violations, safeguarding individuals' rights and interests. Risk management and control effectiveness, identifying, assessing, and controlling risk associated with non-compliance with legal and regulatory requirements. Organizations reduce the likelihood and impact of compliance-related risk on their operations, finances, and reputation, right? And we got to protect ourselves. And now corporate responsibility. Demonstrates the organization's commitment to corporate responsibility, accountability, and good corporate citizenship. It showcases the organization's willingness to operate within the boundaries of the law, 
uphold ethical standards and fulfill its obligations to society, contributing to sustainable business practices and positive stakeholder relations, right? That one speaks for itself. Facilitation of business operations. It aims to facilitate business operations by providing clear guidelines, standards, and procedures for conducting business activities in compliance with legal and regulatory requirements. It's, it streamlines processes, reduces administrative burdens, and enhances operational efficiency, enabling the organization to focus on its core objectives and strategic initiatives. So how do we establish success for our organization with compliance? All right, so here are, the, here, here are the, some of the key guidelines for, um, for reaching organizational success with compliance, right? We have to set clear objectives. We have to identify applicable requirements, right? Because some of them are applicable and would just be wasting time, right? Compliance risk assessment, compliance policies and procedures. And now we have to allocate the right resources and responsibilities to getting the, to getting the job done. We have to implement controls and measures. We, and this is something that like a lot of people, they, they don't like, but it's necessary, right? We have to provide the proper training and awareness, right? Monitor and assess, monitor, assess, and review all the time. It's a continuous cycle. Report and communicate. And then lastly, continuous improvement and adaptation, always being willingness, always having the willingness to adjust, to learn, to shift, and go from there, all right? So in conclusion, we spoke about the definition of compliance the key elements of compliance, the objectives of compliance, and the role that compliance plays in organizational success, all right? So with that being said, we are at the end. I want to know your thoughts. Did I miss anything? Uh, should, would you like me to cover anything additional in regards to this? Uh, what are your thoughts on compliance? Um, how do, like, cause, and if you are in cybersecurity, right, and especially in the GRC, is it like just one position for GRC, or do some people do governance? Do some people do risk management? Do some people do compliance or like, how are the titles? I'm curious to know. Uh, I, I want to know your thoughts. What do you think? Did you find this video helpful? All right. So let's go back to full screen so we can wrap up this video. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and learn more about compliance with me because guess what? I am learning this along with you. I did the research, created the presentation and said, okay, let's, let's go through it together and we can share the wealth, share the knowledge. Let me know if you found it helpful, if you want me to continue with these type of videos, whether it's related to QA, whether it's related to cybersecurity, whatever it might be. It could be related to software engineering, whatever the case may be. I'm here for you. Let me know what you thought about it, right? But on your way out, do me a huge, huge favor on your way out, all right? Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can know every single time that we go live. And if you are in need of one-on-one -on -one technical coaching with me, go over to www.techcoachrop.dev where you can sign up for a coaching plan and we can get to work, all right? But until next time, my friends, my families, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. This is Tech Coach Ralph, and we are out. Information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.